Hey guys, welcome to this new video. Today I want to talk a little bit about these GPS trackers that you can get for under 20 euro used from sites like eBay and sometimes even for like 4 euros if you are lucky. They contain a lot of interesting parts and are normally used commercially to track inventory um, deliveries of big pellets or something like that and check the temperature, the vibration, if the parcel was falling down or so. And yeah, let's check them out deeper and what you might could do with them to reuse them later. So let's start by the outer shell and later we go inside and take yeah, a look what really is there to work with. Um, so here's an example of them from eBay for 18 euros. These are mostly like used then and most likely the battery is empty also, but we will take a look later. And it's funny that they have similar background to mine. Yeah, it's not mine. And yeah, the case itself is glued. I got two units just to check them out. And you have no opening. You have just this push button here where an LED is inside. It can be red and green. And also it is ultrasonically welded. So you have to pry it open and yeah, basically destroy the case. There is a way to reuse it without fully opening it by just melting here at this position to access the debug interface of the main microcontroller but um, since the battery is dead on most of them just melting it open there it's uh, not going to work very well and yeah other than that we have not much on the outside these are from the system loco company and called hgd4 and yeah let's just open it up I will use a knipping tool and a screwdriver. Just make sure to not start at this corner here because as you can see there was a small extra sensor for the temperature which is now gone. So you maybe know why. So I will yeah, just start here and just press in and cut a little bit um, in the corner as it's the best to access here at this side and after just getting a bit of a hole inside I will yeah, pry it open with a screwdriver and just lift it with force but still like controlled force I would call it after that it's just best to Get in between the halves of the plastic, which is not the simplest to do. We can see we have already a somewhat opening here and we can then pry it open further completely around the case. Like so, and it should be able to be lifted out like so. And we can see we have the same inerts as with the other PCB. So let's also continue with the other one as it's known already and maybe zoom in a bit. And it's unfortunately not capturing the whole PCB but we just simply start on one side and I will use a tweezer to show a bit. Um, the beginning is the middle part here which is a Nordic NRF52840 microcontroller which is uh, normally used for Bluetooth low energy applications and this is also the main SOC and this one controls everything else. It has the Bluetooth antenna and I guess this is used to receive yeah, BLE beacons and also determine the position based on this. It's also the most yeah, sleepy part overall. 
We have two acceleration sensors, so they are very redundant in everything. We have like, um, what is the next part we can look at? We have the humidity and temperature sensor, which would be here, of course, and is now somewhere. Then we have a light sensor here and next to the switch and also the LEDs. And the light is then just also being measured through this yeah, opening. We have an ESP8266 SOC microcontroller with an external two megabyte of flash. This is for once used to scan for Wi-Fi networks nearby to determine the position. I saw this in the logging. So they send all your Wi-Fi names nearby into the cloud. And it can also be used to directly connect to your infrastructure and upload the data that way. Then we continue here on this side and there is this Quackdell BG95-M3, which is a, a GSM LTE modem, which does also include GPS. So as the GPS tracker needs it, of course. It's also nice to have it here. And yeah, other than that, all the parts can be switched on and off. So basically even the main power can be switched from the button. If the device is fully turned off, it cannot be turned on on its own. And the Nordic SOC can switch off the Wi-Fi and the GPS and so on. Let's take a look at the back. There's not much. Other than under it, we have four AA batteries, which results in a complete voltage of about 6.5 volt, but the, um, the power supply can be like five volt without trouble. And also if you would like use a LiPo battery, I don't think this would be of any problem if you use a custom firmware on it. Okay, what else are we here? Ah, here is a moisture opening to have the pressure inside the same at the outside, I would say. And yeah, the firmware on the Nordic SOC is not really protected in this variant here I have. I was able to read it out and I was able to just look at what it does did take a look a bit at the cloud side. It's uh, using some yeah, bytes protocol, which I did not look further as it's a pain to debug or to reverse and not worth anything really. Um, the ESP32, uh, not 32, the ESP8266 is only running the AT command uh, firmware, which is just used by the uh, Nordic chip to control it via the AT commands. And on the Quacktail modem is also just running the modem firmware, which means if we just replace the firmware on the Nordic chip with a custom one, you would decide, of course, you need to write, which maybe like reports back temperature data, basically reports back all the things this thing already does. And yeah, you can build your own custom GPS tracker in terms of firmware with the hardware given, of course, for quite the low price and yeah, quite a lot of stuff to play around with. And this is just what I wanted to share. Um, it, I did not write a custom firmware until now and uh, yeah. I know it's possible, but I have no usage really and just wanted to share and look inside of it, of course. Yes, this is the interesting part. And I made this pinout diagram, which is somewhat readable. And you have um, basically here in the middle, the de big debug header, which is uh, featuring the SWD interface of the Nordic chip the UART interface and also a reset. So you could use just this to flash everything and debug everything you need. You have just an interception of the UART communication between the Nordic and the modem, where you can hook into to listen 
too and maybe even send custom AT commands if you would not use the Nordic chip. And you also have the interface for the uh, ESP8266, which can be used to just reflash it as well as wanted. And I'm not uh, deep into it, but I'm quite sure that this pins here or these pins here are a USB interface of this modem. So in theory, you could connect USB to this one and just disable everything else and have a fully LTE modem for I mean 18 euros, it's not that cheap these days anymore, but uh, yeah, back in the days this would be the holy grail for that price. And yeah, other than that the SIM card was not activated anymore, so I had to put in my own. I guess they have something like a contract for a year and after that it will run out automatically, so if you get one that is not so old, you might be happy to even get free data from it and yeah that's all I wanted to share today and basically as many people ask on how to hack stuff this is basically on how I go into it I open it up I try to get the firmware out of the of most of the devices as possible to reverse engineer the firmware mainly because this is where everything is really described and the firmware doesn't lie. So even if you have a command interface, you never know what else is hidden behind it. If you have the firmware of that command interface, you can take a look inside and really look how the firmware is parsing any input you get and yeah, what is really happening behind the scenes. So make sure to get the firmware out of stuff if you want to play around with it and yeah, make sure to not delete it before getting it. And yeah, that's all for today. Have a great day.